Hi, welcome to the first episode of Uncle Mike's Cooking. I plan to put up uh, quite a few uh, videos of uh, some dishes that I've uh, learned to cook and hope that you'll enjoy them. First question probably is, well, who's this guy and what's he all about? I'm just a guy, I'm uh, about five years away from retirement. Uh, I've never had a lot of hobbies and I'm kind of looking uh, for hobbies to do when I retire and I've kind of gotten into cooking the past couple years. Uh, I've always, you know, known how to cook uh, basically for myself, but it's always been things like uh, spaghetti, tuna and noodles, stuff like that. Uh, recently, in the past couple years, I've taken a couple cooking classes while we've been traveling overseas, and uh, I've really started to appreciate using good, fresh ingredients, uh, doing ethnic foods, and really uh, trying to up my game. So. I'm not a uh, professional chef. I've never uh, had a lot of cooking classes. I don't have a chef's kitchen. I'm just a guy trying to learn about cooking and I hope uh, you'll enjoy yourself watching me learn. Today what I'm going to cook uh, for a little party that we're having for family tonight is a, a Jordanian dish that uh, we learned uh, how to cook at a cooking class when we went to Jordan a couple years ago. And it's called Suniat Dijaj which is basically an oven roasted chicken. Uh, you can see right here, I have the recipe that the cooking class gave me. I like to put them in plastic inserts, which keeps them nice and fresh and I can get food over and just wipe it off. So that's kind of how I keep my uh, recipes. And uh, you can see the ingredients which are laid out in front of you here. Uh, we have, um, we have uh, three, we're going to use three cloves of garlic. Now this is called a bulb of garlic. The cloves are inside of the, uh, the uh, bulb of garlic. So most, uh, a lot of the dishes that I cook, they ask for a couple of cloves of uh, garlic. You don't ever want to mistake a clove for a bulb or you'll like really overpower the dish that you're making. Uh, we're also going to use a uh, two pounds of tomatoes two pounds of potatoes, um, one pound of onions, and our spices. Uh, basically salt, pepper, ground cardamom, which cost me $13 at the international market, some nutmeg, cumin, and cinnamon. Now cinnamon is not something that a, a lot of Americans typically would use in cooking, but it uh, really gave the kitchen a nice uh, smell when uh, we uh, cooked this dish. I only made this dish other than when we made it in Jordan. I've made it one other time. My uh, brother-in-law was uh, dating a uh, woman from Jordan and she made me feel so good when she came into uh, our house the day that I was uh, making this meal. And she said, oh, it just smells just like my mom's kitchen used to smell when I was a little girl. So uh, the cinnamon you'll definitely uh, smell while you're cooking this dish. And it adds a nice flavor to the chicken. So with that, uh, we'll start uh, prepping the dish. The basic uh, idea behind this is we're going to uh, take use two chickens. And we're going to basically rub them with olive oil and the spices, then cut them up. Then we'll be cutting up the uh, vegetables. We'll be uh, sauteing the uh, on uh, onions and the uh, garlic, and then arranging the tomatoes and the potatoes in a uh, in a uh, dish along with the uh, chicken. And we'll also be browning the chicken 15 minutes a piece per piece uh, before we bake it. And bake it about 45 minutes. So let's. We're not going to waste a lot of time on showing how to uh, prep the vegetables, but let me uh, start prepping them, and I'll get. Okay, back. I've uh, started the process of working with the vegetables that we're going to sauté. Now the uh, recipe is going to be uh, linked uh, uh, on the YouTube uh, page that we're going to put up. Uh, now remember, this came from uh, uh, was originally probably printed in Arabic, came from uh, Jordan. So I think there's a little something lost in the translation because I'm looking at the. Uh, looking at the instructions here and it says combine vegetables in skillets saute them in oil till the onions are clear it doesn't really say what vegetables I mean a tomato is a vegetable a potato is a vegetable but uh, those don't get uh, sauteed the only things I'm going to saute 
are uh, the onion, which I'm going to cut into rings, and the uh, three cloves of garlic that we talked about. Here's a little clove of garlic. Like I said, I'm not a professional uh, chef. I'm just doing the best I can to uh, chop this up. I even had to ask uh, my wife here about uh, what did we uh, saute? Uh, did we just do the uh, onions and the garlic or did we do the potatoes too? And I'm pretty sure uh, that we don't uh, saute the uh, potatoes. We're going to let those bake. If I'm wrong, well, we'll learn. We'll learn next time. We'll make a little note on the uh, recipe, but I don't think I'm wrong. So remember, remember a clove, not a, uh, not a whole, uh, what's that called? Uh, there, Patty? A bulb. Not a bulb. Not a bulb of uh, garlic or you'll just overwhelm the dish. Uh, Patty is uh, my wife, a beautiful wife, 20 years. Uh, funny thing about her is she really, she knows a lot about cooking. A lot more than I do. A lot of the terms, a lot of things that go wrong. When I cook and something goes wrong, she can usually tell. But she just doesn't like to cook. But she knows quite a bit, so she's kind of my resource on uh, cooking. The uh, reason why probably that she knows so much was uh, for you millennials, way back before the turn of the century, back when me and her went to school, first off, there were only two genders, boys and girls. And boys, uh, when they got into junior high school, went to wood shop. And girls went to home ec, so I think that's where she really learned a lot about cooking. Uh, she knows what a roux is. I made a uh, pie with uh, homemade, I tried to make homemade uh, crust. Uh, and I would grade it at about a C plus or something. And she was able to tell me what I had done wrong. So I'm looking forward to uh, trying to make some more crust and improve on that. So uh, overall, uh, very good cook. Okay, so... I've cut the potatoes and they said just we're just going to make rings out of them. And uh, that's it. I'm going to onions. start uh, prep. The onions. What about it? You said potatoes. Oh, I cut the onions. I'm sorry, not potatoes. And making rings out of them. And we're going to saute them and start working on the chicken. Now, when uh, you see me next, I'll be uh, up to my elbows in chicken. Okay, I'm back again. I've mixed up the spices and cleaned out the chicken. There's always a little bit of fat inside the chicken that I pull out and then I wash it real good and dry it and get all the blood out of it and everything. So here's the chicken. And the next thing the recipe calls for is putting the spices and oil on it. So I'm gonna do this two ways. I'm making two chickens today. That's what the recipe calls for. And after I get the chicken spiced up, I'm going to cut them into pieces so it'll be easier for us to eat. Um, I'm going to put oil on this chicken. I'm going to put oil on all over it. And then I'm going to add the spices by hand. What kind of oil is that? That is olive oil. I love this. Uh, doesn't specifically call for olive oil, but anytime you're doing Mediterranean food, I love olive oil. It's the oil of the gods. If you think about it, it goes back 2,500 years at least to the Greeks, uh, probably 3,000 years in Homer's time. So, we'll get it all oiled up. Here's the spices that were called for, and I'm mixing them up. I actually doubled the amount that... Uh, was called for in the recipe just so I don't run out. And we're just going to put the spices on the chicken and rub them in. I can already smell the cinnamon. Can you there, uh, Miss Patty? Yes, I can. That looks like an awful lot of spices on that chicken. Is it supposed to be like that? Mm-hmm. Very spicy. I can really smell it. <laughs> I can smell the cinnamon a lot. Yes, the cinnamon really makes this dish different than what uh, we're normally uh, accustomed to eating, I think. But uh, I think it really brings out a nice flavor to it. Put some oil on this side. Now, as a little aside here, I'd like to encourage everybody who's watching this to consider traveling to Jordan for tourism. We went there in 2014. 
I'd been there uh, once before in 1992 when I was in the Air Force. We had an exercise over there with the uh, Jordanian Air Force. But uh, I had always wanted to take my wife there. And as far as safety, Jordan is still a very pro-U.S., very safe country to be in. Uh, very little. Uh, they haven't been affected by the ISIS uh, activity. People over there love their king. I remember their king's name, uh, Patty. Who's name? No, he's the dead oh, one. Oh, Abdul, Abdul, Abdullah, Abdul. his son. Uh, they love, they like the monarchy over there. They respect the monarchy, and that's probably why they haven't had as much trouble uh, with ISIS. Uh, even people leaving Jordan to go fight with ISIS, very few people have done that. And actually, activity of ISIS inside Jordan uh, has not been uh, anything. Uh, uh, that's been noticeable. We felt perfectly safe there in 2014. People very much need the tourism. They told us that uh, since the Arab Spring, tourism had been down 90% uh, from the U.S. as far as Jordan. So uh, if you ever want to see a Middle Eastern country that's safe, I would uh, highly recommend uh, going to Jordan. Uh, typically what people do there, they see Amman for a day or two. They go to Jerash, which is uh, a little north of Amman. It's great Roman ruins there. And then they go to Petra, which was an uh, uh, ancient city. You've seen it in uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, that's the treasury building. And it was uh, the capital of the Nabataean civilization. And people usually go down there and spend a day down there. All right, we got the chicken all... Uh, um, We got the chicken all spiced up and uh, we'll get ready to cut it up here. Okay, I'm back again. Uh, this is the second chicken. I washed it off again. I'm gonna try this one a little bit different. I'm gonna make the cuts first and then uh, add this and then put it through the spice. Uh, I really ripped up that first chicken uh, skin a little bit. Uh, I think it goes a little better this one. And this is the typical way you would have it. Uh, you work with your poultry, so I'm gonna put it on its. Uh, with its back facing me and try to get these uh, thighs cut out first. This might be where a professional kitchen would come in handy with a thousand dollar set of knives or something. Yeah, I think this is coming off a little bit better than the first set. Let me get this guy. Okay, I got one thigh off. The second one, and then most of his skin was on there, so that's good. Most of the second thigh off. There we go, got the second thigh off. Wings off. When I did this meal first time, I don't remember the chicken being this hard to cut. But this guy, hard to cut. Okay, good. Got through some bone there. Now I'm just a nice meat. One wing off. All right, there. They just got the skin on here. Let me cut through that bad boy. Okay, this is the back. that away, cut through the skin, and now we're left with mostly the breast. I still got some stuff I'm not going to cook, so I'm going to cut that out too. Careful not to cut your fingers. I got 10 to devote to the cause. There we go. Give 
we've got uh, three people coming over tonight. Uh, my mother-in-law, my sister-in-law, and my, uh, her husband, my brother-in-law. Uh, so each piece of chicken cut into uh, eight pieces, that's going to be 16 pieces. And they've so, never had Jordanian food. They've never had Jordanian food. So they're in for a treat. And uh, we're making, and I'm probably going to make a film out of it, we're making an appetizer after this called uh, ben, uh, Galliat Bandura. There we go. I think I got the idea here. I'm cutting right through the breastplate. Oh, yeah. The sternum. The sternum. Okay, now I'm just going to rub the spice on these individual pieces and see how they come out. Uh, next thing we're going to do, see if we can keep filming here. So let's come over here, and if you remember, we cut up some uh, garlic and uh, onions. So we're going to uh, saute those. Come over here, Patty. I previously poured in a little bit of olive oil, just enough to get the bottom of the pan going. I'm going to turn this on. Maybe I should go this way. Put all the onions in. Break them up a little more. And get this stuff sauteing. Now, when we took this course in Jordan, remember we were doing about five different courses. We had lentil soup. We had the baba ganoush, all going at once. Of course, we were being guided by professionals. I remember. I tried to pretend I didn't know what I was doing, so he would help me. <laughs> yes, you seem to have quite the flirtation going on. <laughs> so, we don't have a professional chef here this time, so we can only concentrate on one thing at a time. And we're out of a spatula. Is there a spatula in the dishwasher? Yes. So I'm just uh, waiting for this to heat up. Let's make sure I've got it on. Get the old glasses on. Okay. Put it on medium. Let it get warm and we'll uh, saute it. Okay, we're done with the uh, sauteing the onions and the garlic. Uh, saute the onions till they're just kind of translucent and we put them aside in this dish. Our next step will be to brown all 16 pieces of chicken. And they take about 15 minutes a piece is what the recipe says. So we're not gonna bore you uh, by showing you every piece, but we're just gonna uh, put a piece in here and uh, brown them. And uh, after we're done with all this, uh, arrange the dish. I've also, uh, uh, during the time the onions were being cooked by the sous chef, I uh, cut up the uh, tomatoes and I'm getting ready to uh, cut the, uh, cut the po potatoes just in uh, oval slices. And we'll be ready to put the dish together probably in about 30 minutes or so. You have a sous chef? Yeah, yeah, my assistant. Where's your assistant? Uh, behind the camera right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Also, my assistant slash commander in chief pointed out that I did uh, pick this uh, spatula up right out of the dishwasher, which I thought the dishwasher had clean dishes in it. Um, she says no, they uh, they're not. So always a good move uh, if you're going to make that move. Uh, wash it off uh, before you start using it to cook with, or don't let your wife see you do that. Okay, we'll be back in a little bit uh, when we got the chicken all browned up and we put the dish together and bake it. Okay, we're headed towards the finish line here. I'm going to, uh, we're going to keep filming until we actually get the dish in the oven. Uh, one of the last things uh, I do on this recipe uh, is cut the onions up because in other things I've made, I cut the potatoes up. Why? I don't know the difference between onions and potatoes. Uh, this is a potato. Okay. Um, <laughs> When I, other recipes, I've cut up potatoes and then left them out and they've gotten brown. Uh, you got to remember if you have cut up potatoes, you got to get them into water quickly or they're going to brown on you. So I'm doing the potatoes last and 
the way the recipe calls for it is cut thin slices, which I'm doing. And then they had one more step. They said cut the thin slices in half. So I just kind of wanted to show you how I do that. Uh, and we are just about ready. We're going to go to our pan and we're going to calls for a uh, greased pan. There's the other potatoes that I did. We don't want to forget our tomatoes are over here in this. It's a big part of this dish. I'm not usually a huge tomato fan, but uh, I like the way they taste with this dish. Uh, those of you who like tomatoes, it will go really good for you. Okay, come over here. Like I said, it calls for a grease pan. Here's my butter. Buttering my pan. This is what we're going to have to use three or four uh, dishes to get all this chicken cooked. Okay, come back over here and uh, I don't have my glasses. Just a second. Oh, they're on my, uh, oh, here they are on my thing here. And where is the recipe? Here it is. I want to make sure I do the last part of this right. Um, and then we're going to do a little after action uh, report too, because I did learn some lessons just doing this. Um, place the chicken in a grease dishing, uh, baking dish, add onions and potatoes, and then the tomatoes. So I got all the chicken browned here, browned about uh, 15 minutes a piece, took a little while. I did, uh, I did find uh, four, four frying pans, so it actually went a little quicker than I thought about. Okay, I managed to get four pieces in here. Okay, okay, it says put the chicken in and then the uh, onions and potatoes. Back to our onions. So I can only use about a quarter of the onions because I think this is going to take like four, four pieces. Put that on there. So this is how you assemble the yeah, dish. So you're doing the assembly line right now. And we're going to put the about a quarter of these potatoes on, I hope. And a quarter to a third. I don't know if this is going to take three, three baking dishes or four. We'll figure it out, though. Okay. And then the last is the nice tomatoes. Now, I bet a lot of people might wonder, do they grow tomatoes in Jordan? Well, yes, they do. That's something I learned when I went over there. Lots of uh, produce that's freshly uh, grown in uh, Jordan. All right. Do you cover that with tin foil? That's a great question. And I believe you do. Um, cover the pan. Thank you. See, isn't she wonderful? And she's like, she's my backstop to <laughs> all my uh, enthusiasm. <laughs> What I lack in abilities, I make up for in enthusiasm. And she has the enthusiasm. Okay, so we did that. Uh, now it'll just be basically uh, putting the rest of the dishes back together. I think we're going to cut it off right now. i got to get the rest of these in, and then we're going to come back for just a quick minute for lessons learned. Okay, I'm back again. I got all the uh, dishes prepa uh, prepared. It took uh, three different baking dishes to get all that chicken in there. So they all just went in. I'm going to leave them in 45 minutes. I noticed on this uh, uh, recipe, and again, this could be some sort of translation thing or, uh, or something. It uh, calls for in the ingredients one and a half cups of water. I, I don't remember using any water. I drank a little water, but I don't remember. So I just put a third of a cup of water into each uh, baking dish to kind of help the juices start flowing. Uh, I'll probably check halfway through to make sure nothing's burning or anything, but I think it will come out pretty good. I think this will be a pretty good meal. Um, one uh, thing that's always part of uh, uh, my cooking uh, evaluation uh, even before we eat is well, how well did I do cleaning up the kitchen? That's the big item uh, with my uh, sous chef wife, uh, captain of the ship, uh, Patty. <laughs> She always tells me I need to learn how to uh, clean as I go. So let's take a look at the kitchen and uh, you can give me a little grade there, Patty, for cleaning as I go. Oh my. Um, I'm not sure you did very well on cleaning as you go here. <laughs> what kind of grade would you give that? Um, I would say about a D minus. D minus, okay. Yeah. So men, remember, if you're learning how to cook uh, like I am, uh, 
try to keep uh, your wife happy by cleaning as you go. This looks like this is probably going to be an hour's work for me. It's already uh, 1230 where I am. We've got one more dish we're going to make and do another film on and then we'll, company will start arriving about six o'clock. Uh, another thing I like to do, uh, I'm uh, ex-military. I was in the Air Force 20 years and some of those habits die hard and I always like to do a lessons learned after action report. And uh, two things that I would say that I'm going to write down from this one, I usually, if you look at my recipes, I write a lot of stuff down that I learned. Um, I would say don't uh, cut the chicken up into pieces first before you put the uh, spices on them. And then I would get, uh, I just kind of like put the spices on my hand, rubbed them on. And if I recall in Jordan, uh, I'm pretty sure they had, what's that called, like a little sifter thing, Patty? A little shaker. A little shaker. I think I will, though I don't have a $20,000 chef kitchen here, I think I will go to Bed Bath & Beyond and buy a sifter. And I would put the, uh, put the uh, spices in the sifter for next time and just uh, sprinkle over the pieces of chicken as they're laid out after uh, you have it oiled up. Uh, other than that, uh, I think uh, it's going to be a good meal. We'll uh, show the presentation of it tonight when uh, we have a uh, company over. And, uh, uh, the recipe will be posted uh, to the uh, website. Hmm? Below. Below. You'll have a link to the website uh, below. Okay, thanks for uh, cooking with me. Okay, so now we've uh, taken out the Suniat Dijaj after it's been cooking for 45 minutes. And this is what it looks like. It filled up uh, three different uh, containers and we're gonna get ready to uh, hand it out, pass it out to our guests. Okay, here we are with family, gathered around with our, having our Sudiyat Dijaj. We've had our appetizers. Looks like it came out good. Uh, let everybody uh, begin the eating fast. Smells good. <clears throat>